Hi everyone, I am Prithvi from Informatica and in this video we will be talking about base objects and support tables and staging tables. The agenda of this video will start with an introduction, then stage tables, then we will talk about base objects and support tables, then a demo and summary. Now coming to introduction. Supporting tables are the tables that get created when we create the base object or stage tables. Now why do we need a support table? They are required to store contributing records, to store history of a record, store trust and validation settings, store previous landing records, store rejects, etc. First let us talk about staging tables and the support tables that are formed along with staging tables. So as we can see in this diagram, when a staging table is initially created, there won't be any mapping created for it. That is, we will just have one support table that is the reject table. Whenever we load the data to the stage table and there is some issue with the data or something, it will go to the reject table. Next, when we create a mapping for the staging table, that is mapping from a landing table to the staging table, then we have three more tables getting created with the staging table, that is the OPL table, PRL table and the raw table. PRL table is the previous landing table. For the data to go into the PRL table, we need to enable delta detection. This is used to check for new updated data coming from the landing table. Next is the raw table. Next is the raw table. If we have to enable audit trail for the data to go into the raw table, this is kind of a history table where the data which is going to the staging table are stored in the raw table as well. Next is the OPL table which is the online previous landing table. If delta detection is enabled, then whenever we do a cleanse put on the BO table, then data goes to the OPL table. In the demo, I will be showing all this to you all. Moving to the demo. Here I have created two staging tables, CRM address and SFA address. Now I have not created any mapping for CRM address but I have created a mapping for SFA address. As you can see here, there is a mapping for SFA address. Now when we go to the database, now you can see for CRM address we just have two tables created that is C CRM address and C CRM address reject, no other table whereas for C SFA address we have four more tables created okay see csfa address which has an opl table prl table draw table and reject table that is because we have created mapping for it now moving back to the hub console now let us start uh, the state job where we can see the data going into all these tables now for sfa address i have enabled audit trail and delta detection now let's try okay and one more thing in my landing table I have one record and my other tables are all empty it's empty PRL table is empty draw table is empty OPL table is also let us first populate the OPL table by running a cleanse put SIF call from the SOAP UI I'll be running this It's done. Let's check the DB. Let's check the OPL table. Yeah, we can see data here, right? Initially it was empty. We can check the address table as well. Yeah, the data is gone here from the lens put. So that is how OPL table is populated. Whereas the other tables are still empty because we have not run the stage job yet. We will now run the stage job and then check PRL and raw table. Let's wait for the job to complete. Okay, now since our job is completed, we can go and check the data. Let's go to the database. PRL table. We can see that now the data is populated in the PR ta PRL table. Similarly, let's check the raw table too. Yes, the data is in the raw table. Raw table contains every history, so it contains the cleanse put history also. 
Now let's check the reject table. For the reject table, let us uh, edit the data and uh, for example, let's send the same P key. One more data with the same P key. Or we can send the last update data as null also. Let's send it as 11. data is inserted. Let us go and run the state job again. Okay. We can see the data is rejected. Rejected records is one. Let's check in the DB. we can see here duplicated landing record so this is how the data goes to reject table so that's all about stage table and the supporting table so these are the tables that are created along with the base object let us go through it one by one now as you can see you can see edge tables right underscore edge these are the history tables these are created only if we enable history for the base object otherwise it won't be created so let's begin with the xref table so XF table stores the contributing records. If multiple versions of BO record is coming from a different source system, it is stored here. Then history of XF uh, table is stored in HXF. Then comes the dirty table. It stores all the records that needs to be tokenized, either created newly or any update on them is there. Then the VCT table. It stores validation rules for the BO. It's for validation rule setup. Then we have the HMRG table. It contains merge and unmerge history. Then the script table, it contains fuzzy tokens after tokenization. Then we have the empty CH table, which contains the match results before we perform. Moving on to the CTL table, this is a table which corresponds to trust settings. It contains the trust results. Then we have the HCTL table, which contains the history of the CTL table. Moving on to the history table, which contains the history of the base objects. Then we have EMI and EMO tables, which is the external match and input and output tables. Then we have the VXR table, which contains validation results at the XREF level and HVXR for the history of this XREF table validation results. In addition to these tables, from MDM 10.3 onwards, we have PCTL table introduced. This is called as the pending control table. This table takes information about records which overrides to trusted values that are waiting for a merge task action. It contains all the columns that are present in the control table, but an additional column called as interaction ID. If history is enabled for the base object, we have HPCTL table as well. Next in the demo, I will be showing all these tables. Now, I have configured two tables, that is the parent and the child table, with the parent table having these many columns and the child table having these columns. Now, I have not enabled history for the parent and child table. So, if we go to the database, we can see only these many tables that are present for the parent table. There is no H tables. So, now let me go and enable history for the parent table. So this is done. Now let us go back to the database and check. Yes, now we can see all the history tables like HCTL, HIST, HVXR tables. Okay, so now I've created a match rule for the parent table and also a validation rule on the parent identifier column. When the downgrade trust is given as Y, this validation rule will be implied. And also I have an enabled trust for a parent column, that is parent identifier. 
and I've given uh, assigned trust for two source systems SFA and CRM okay. now let's check the database I've already loaded the data to the parent and the child table so let's check the DB okay so let's check the parent table we have two records inserted from two source systems the XREF we have two records let's go to the child here parent ID is the foreign key column which is the row ID object of the parent column the parent table whereas in child XREF table we have the parent ID column which is pointing to the row ID XREF of the parent table and S parent ID column which is pointing to the row ID object of the parent column next we move to the control table this table contains the trust settings since I've enabled trust in only one column that is party identifier here we can see the last row ID system that is contributing to the trust the last update date and the last um, SRX column which shows which record from the XREF table has been contributed to the BO record next we have the VCT table this table contains the validation rules so since we have set validation for only one source system that particular source system has validation ok and it is degrading for 30 percent that is validation percentage and another one has one and zero moving on, moving on to VXR table this is the same VCT table but in the extra level now we have the dirty table dirty table contains data that needs that is new or updated and which needs tokenization now our strip table is empty once we run the no tokenization job we'll have the match tokens in the strip table let's run the tokenization job okay I'm running the tokenization job it's done let's go to the DB now we can see the dirty table has been truncated and the strip table will contain the match tokens as you can see next we'll run the match job now our MTCH table is empty once we run the match job the data will get populated here I have selected the match rule and then I'm running the match job it's completed let's check the database we got the data in the match table so the row ID object matched the survival row ID object and the row ID object is the victim's row ID object so after the merge row ID object 2 will be merged in row ID object 1 in this table we also have the row ID match rule next we'll merge the record and check the HMRG table here now we don't have any records in the HMRG table it's empty let's run the merge now I'll run the auto merge job okay it's done let's check the database yes we can see the merge right in the HMRG table we can see the history create date of the merge target and the source to ID object that is survivor and the victim match rule merge date etc if you unmerge the records you will get the unmerge date also here we can also check the parent table if it has been merged yes we can just see one record right now extra table will have both records and the original row ID object column it maintains the hierarchy of the records this is how we can come to know which is the original row ID object of a particular record after merge next moving on to the child table sure when we go here the party ID is 1 because the parents have been merged and only one parent is surviving so the party ID 1 only remains as I have mentioned earlier from 10.3 onwards we have a new addition to the support tables that is a PCTL table that is a pending control table 
It is used when a task workflow is configured for a merge operation. It is used by business entity services APIs only and not by service integration framework APIs and bad jobs. Right now I do not have the configuration for it but you can try it from your end. Moving on to the history table. Parent history table where we can see the history of data that comes to the parent table. Then we have the control history table which contains the history of the trust on the parent table. Then we have validation history table in the extra level. Yeah, that's all about these supporting tables. Here is the summary. You can go to this configuration guide of 10.4 and then also you can go to this KB article regarding PCTL table. It would be great to hear from you all so you can write to us the below two links. Thank you.